Welcome to Booktopia TV. I'm John Purcell and I'm here with Rachel Johns, best-selling author of Outback Blaze. Welcome Rachel. Hi John, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> um, first I want to just jump straight into um, what your series is about, because you've got the um, series, the Bunny at Bay series, and you've yep. got Outback Dreams, Outback Blaze, and in October you've got... Outback Ghost. Outback Can't Ghost. wait to show you all that one. So, so why why this series? Why why is, why set into one one okay. town? Yeah. The reason I decided to write a series was actually because um, readers seem to want series. Um, obviously, my books are heavily romance, and a lot of romance readers read American series books. Um, a lot of those authors have up to ten books or more about one you know one small town, and people really seem to like that. Um, so I decided maybe that was something I should have a look at. But also because um, my first book, Jilted. I got a lot of feedback on Facebook and a couple of emails saying people wanted to know what happened to the characters um, after they, you know, after the book. And to me, my romance books, it's about two characters and the, their story's kind of finished to me. I mean, obviously they're going to live happily ever after, you know, because it's a romance. But I didn't really feel that I could go back and write them again, you know, and like the next stage in their life. Um, but it made me start realising that readers do want to continue a world the book. They love, you know, reading about the same characters and stuff. So I started thinking along those lines when I um, wrote the next books and I pitched a series rather than a single one. Um, but I have actually then gone back and next year there will be a sequel to Jilted come out. But it is different characters, just the same. So I did it because that seemed to be, to me, what the readers wanted. Um, and certainly seems to be people are already getting excited about Outback Ghost on my Facebook page and stuff. So it seems to be they, that's why I did it for them, and hopefully they like it. So um, this gives you greater problems because if you're you've created a town, in the background of the new book and then the new book, there are there are people that we know from, yep. and they're they're just doing and their normal lives. I'm not a planner very much. <laughs> um, you know, I, I did come in. If I ever read a series again, which you know, I probably would do, um, I would be more plan do more planning from the start. Say so the character. In the first book, uh, there's a secondary character, uh, R Ruby, in the first book, and she's the heroine in the second book. I didn't, when, until about halfway through writing the first book, I hadn't decided that she was going to be the second character. I probably didn't think about her development enough. So yeah, if I was going to write a series again, I would be more um, specific. Uh, I read one uh, best-selling author recently who writes series overseas. She said, leave it very, um, like, don't write, don't write yourself into a corner. So if you are a bit of a not non-planner like me, to just introduce people but don't give them too many different details. For instance, um, in Jilted, the character that I'm now writing, written about for the next book, I made her a vegetarian in Jilted, didn't think any reason why, I just thought, yep, she's a vegetarian and this, and of course then when I've now decided to write her story, I had to work out why she's a vegetarian and let that fit in with the story. And I didn't really realise until about, I was about you know, two, three chapters in, and the hero is making bacon for her, and then I suddenly thought, "Hang on, <laughs> <laughs> she can't eat this because she's a vegetarian in Jilted." Yeah. So you know, I think yeah, that's that's one of the problems that come up with series. You kind of got to think ahead a little bit. But it also will probably exercise your imagination now that you've got you know these these larger worlds coming together. Yeah. Even as you're writing the new book, you you probably just without even knowing it is starting to. It's already sort yeah, of starting you, to tick you, over. Like you live there. Or, yeah, exactly. Well, I'm, I haven't written another. Like, so far, there's only three in Bunny Bay um, series, but like people have asked me, is that is that it? And there's a couple of characters in there who they could, you know, they're secondary characters that play a little bit of part. Uh, Frankie and Simone, two names, and they don't have a story, well, not a big story. Um, so there's po there's potential to go back there again, but for the most part, I think it's probably finished <laughs> for that that series. Well, you're you're in a very competitive market, um, uh, yes. and and. Um, in Australia and, and overseas, uh, romances, romance genres uh, in all different forms have led the way in innovation. So, mm -hmm. you know, free ebooks and yeah. um, and sample chapters, novellas, and novellas coming out on an ebook to, to sort of um, keep the name going. Yeah. So I can imagine maybe small spin-offs coming from from this town for for years to come. I can yes, well, it could. Be. I think, as I said, I I think probably I would like to set another series up if I was going to do that yeah. and think more about it from the start because yes I could do a novella um, in Bunyip Bay or, but to me it does feel finished 
kind of thing. Do you have a, do you have a, a, a room in your house with a really big wall? You have a big pin board? <laughs> not yet. <laughs> um, I have a very small house attached to our shop and there's not much room at all and everyone else takes it over. But one day, yes. Yeah. Maybe I'll have a big pin, pin board. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe at the moment you just go, go to the park and, and lie down rocks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Just go. laughs> Take over the town. You're this, you're this person, yes. this is a couple of I do need be... to do more planning, I think, yeah. 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 Um, tell me about life uh, outside of fiction. You, you mean, you're a busy person, um, you know, you're a busy person anyway, because yeah. you're writing so many books, <laughs> but what, what do you do day um, to day? Well, my husband and I own a supermarket in a small town called Gumaling, so it's only about 500 people in town, so it's a small IGA Express news agent. So, um, my life, and I've got three young boys so my life kind of I, do, I am actually writing mostly full-time now and that means that um, other people have to take on the shop um, roles but I go out there a lot and interact with the community um, I serve on the checkout you know on lunch breaks or if I go out to get myself I've got the biggest pantry in town because our house is attached to the shop <laughs> so it's pretty good um, you know I can it can be dangerous too because I can go get an ice cream or chocolate whenever I feel like. But yes, yeah, so I'll go out and you know get eggs or whatever and end up serving for a few minutes. Um, so I interact with you know people, real people <laughs> that, that way. Um, and yeah, I guess just so it's balancing a balancing act of living at work, yeah. two jobs because we live at the supermarket and I write at home obviously as well. And you know balancing family life around that, kids. It seems so. like almost the perfect place. For a writer of rural romance to be, if you wanted to hear stories and yes. secrets, to be in the centre of town it's where everyone good. must come, it is pretty good. And a lot of people, you know, um, they people have asked me, have you put people in books before? Like interviewers ask me that, or at library talks. And I have, I, there's no one that's actually been based, but a lot of people actually would like to be in the book. Like, when are you going to write me into a book? Or and there are some, quite a few characters that come in that would probably be quite interesting um, actually put into a book. And yeah, you hear local gossip. Um, I probably get into trouble saying this, but some of our staff have quite uh, exciting dramas um, happening in their lives, and they're always like, "You could write a book on me," but it's it's that over the top sometimes <laughs> that, that, that I wouldn't know where to start. So yeah, there's sometimes some life, around. life is too bizarre to yes. turn into fiction. Yes. People just say that it is. happen. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, also, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about um, how strong the romance community is, because I've I mean, I've been to a few of the, the yeah. events over the last uh, three or four years, and the way in which different um, romance authors um, look after each other and, mm. and, and also support each other, but also the reader community is so yes. strong and, and um, their, um, their goodwill um, is, is so great. That when you get into one of those rooms with all those fans, Buzz, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, um, the romance, well, I, I don't think I would be where I am today without Romance Writers of Australia, who, you know, and I've met so many friends through there um, that have become more than writing buddies. They're now people I call to talk about, you know, other worries in life and stuff. And they support me through my writing. They support me through other things. So I think writing used to be considered quite a solitary um, profession, mm. and some to some people maybe it still is. But with social media and organisations such as Romance Writers Australia or the Australian Romance Readers Association, who you sort of yeah. probably alluded to them, and you know their support that they offer romance writers. Um, yeah, I don't feel a very solitary at all. Um, sometimes I think there's too much going on <laughs> and it's, it's sort of swinging the other way that you know it's hard to find time to actually switch off and not be connected with people and actually write um, the book. But yeah, Romance Writers Australia, we, we, we do conferences there where we get together and learn the craft and I, I honestly attribute a lot of my success to joining Romance Writers Australia because I was writing before then probably Oh, almost 10 years before I found Romance Writers of Australia and I don't know what I was writing I was just I didn't have I, mean, I had characters but I had no plot I didn't realize that you know characters needed to have a goal and they needed to try to be you know there had to be things going on in their lives and you know, I just I don't know it was very boring probably what I was writing but so I learnt I've got actually a, a writing degree and an English degree I learnt, learnt everything from Romance Writers Australia not through um, my writing and just reading, I think, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, gen I tend to categorise your books as um, rural romance and we bring them together on Booktopia in, all one, in one spot. Are, are yes, you do that very well. <laughs> are you happy with, with that um, uh, category name, that, that genre, that sort of label? I am. I think um, you've got to have a, a genre sort of label to market things, but also 
I, I consider myself probably, I think there's a spectrum, there's so many rural ro romance um, or rural authors out there yeah. now and you know some are definitely more focused on the farm, environmental issues and you know more, a bit more realistic maybe and then there's romance at the other end and you know we're all sort of somewhere on the spectrum. I think I'm closer to the romance end of the spectrum than the rural. I'm not a farmer and I'm not a farmer's wife but I have lived in small towns for the last 10 years. Um, I sort of call myself a co converted country girl because I do, I love living in small towns and the dynamics, but mine are more small town, um, you know, they're set in a rural area uh, that it's not heavily focused on the farm. Like my recent book, Outback Blaze, it's, although there's things happen on a farm, it's about a cop and a horse riding instructor. Um, and so, yeah, I don't see myself at the very rural, rural end, but I think that's what it is. Yeah, it's rural romance, it's set in a small country town and mine do definitely have a romance. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you can't have rural areas without a country town, as a no. as a <laughs> exactly. I mean, even if you are that, well, a country town is always going to be the hub of rural fiction because you know that's where all the people, the farmers, congregate, or you know, yeah. whether it be at the pub or the supermarket or whatever. Yeah. I can imagine this um, because. It, you know, with all the, all the amazing things happening in rural towns these days because of all the writers writing these wonderful <laughs> stories. I, can, I can imagine this big map and, and all these different places crossing over and, and Fleur McDonald's carriers is walking yes. in here and Catherine Hines walking in here. Would be good to do, we should do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's something to think about because yeah, we do, the rural romance authors, I know, I know most of them and stuff and do talk to them like quite regularly and good friends with Catherine Hines who you mentioned. So yeah, we should work out, work out a... <laughs> Well, they do that Road with, trip for yeah, our authors. <laughs> they do that with London and, and, and New York. They try to work out. So I mean, now we've got so much, um, so much imagination and and, uh, and fiction written about our, our country yeah. life. We can try and draw them all up. Yes. No. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you very much for talking with us, Thank Rachel. Thank you. And I'll, best luck with um, Outback Blaze. But um, and in the future, I hope, you. hope to get you back here um, in October good. for for the release of Outback Ghost. Thank you. <laughs> Rachel Johns's new book, Outback Blaze, is available from Booktopia.com dot au right now. Very well done.